Hey guys. guys, welcome back to our channel, Plots with a Twist. We discuss books amongst other things, and we keep yeah. doing this every month, but but we've been it consistent. Is. It's just been a little late, I think. Yeah, a couple days late. Yes, yeah. what? Still beginning of the month, so yeah, I'm making it up. Yeah, but we're here with our wrap up and our TBR. So talking about what we read in May, talking about what we started to read or going to read in June. So let's just cut to it and get to it. How many books you read this month? Uh, four and seven, uh, <laughs> four and three quarters. Okay, I read three, so whatever. Okay, well I will start. Um. Okay, I'll wait on the one you read with okay. um, me. So, um, okay, I read In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune. Oh, your fave. I don't know. I, can, I ain't gonna give him all that. But yes, he has become a favorite <laughs> of sorts. Um, so this is the third book I've read of his. Um, fell in love with House on the Cerulean Sea. So he's, I'm trying to, I don't know if I'm trying to force it or when I see him come out with a new book, I'm like, ooh, when he has tons of books, I could probably just go back to. So I might do that next. But okay, ooh, let me think. So this one was about, ooh, I forgot the names. What? Victor. Uh, yeah, Victor. Yes, Victor. So it focuses on a, a human named Victor. This is in a um dystopic type future setting and in a world where kind of um there's a limited amount of humans and really everything is run by machines and robots and things like that and robots have become sentient and kind of can think on their own and and really have like human like emotions so geo is victor's uh, father but geo is kind of like a puppet man where he um giovanni he was uh, went to the woods and um, you don't know why he went to you don't find out why he went to the woods but he created this home and whole expansive um, environment in the woods and eventually got lonely and um, came across Victor and pretty much have been living his life you know as his father and so uh, Victor has two best friends that are like old robots that he kind of fixed up and one is uh rambo is a little ro uh, vacuum robot mm -hmm. and the other is like a ratchet nurse ratchet <laughs> so she has but she's like a nurse but she has like sociopathic tendencies mm -hmm. it's it's kind of funny That's dark but um so pretty much they're living their life and victor likes to go to the junkyard to get pieces he's um, trying to find pieces to like either find other friends or just stuff to store and um geo has this artificial heart so victor also wants to kind of have a backup just in case geo needs it in the future so he's finding pieces for that and they come across this machine that is really advanced compared to the other machines they've come across and um, they call him Hap because that's all they could tell. And so there ensues this story of them trying to befriend Hap and um, understand where he came from. But something happens where Geo gets taken and Victor and his friends go on a on a mission to rescue Geo and bring him back home. I think that's what the book is about. <laughs> Not I didn't read the synopsis, but that, I mean, I'm trying to go off of my mind and remember. memory, but I don't know what the synopsis tells you, but pretty much, um, so that's really the gist. So TJ Klune, he does a good job of creating these worlds that you, um, really couldn't, really don't think of, but, um, it was just a cute little story. The characters all had like likable personalities for the most part. And TJ Klune is good for throwing a little romantical aspect in there. So I just really enjoyed, it was humorous moments throughout. I really liked uh, some of the personality types of the different characters or robots. And just, just, just the overall story and progression of events. Um, what I guess I didn't too much care for is to me the little romantical elements in this story felt a little forced i don't feel like there was a real strong connection for me that made me really f fall in love with that part of the story mm -hmm. i felt like it that actually distracted i feel like he could have 
created this whole story and kind of focused on the father-son dynamic and and not have to feel like he had to throw that in because I know that's what he does with mm -hmm. most of his books but it just felt like oh that's the thing I'm known for let me put this in here when I don't think it needed to be I think it could have been just this love story of this for this particular story yeah for this particular book I think it just could have been this love story between you know a chosen well a chosen son and you know his father mm -hmm. so yeah but that's it no, oh, look at me being quick that's all that's because i can't remember much because i've read so many books since then okay <laughs> okay so i can't remember the, i know i've mentioned this book in the last one but i had said it as like i had it finished it right no you said you were almost finished almost finished but okay well i'm counting for this last month so um i finished blood orange by karina hale the, the first book in the dracula duet um so if you guys remember I'm this is the book one. huh yeah, I am. It's just not available anywhere. I have to buy it, and I'm not, like, pressed to spend $20 on a book right now. So, um, <laughs> so okay. So, if you guys remember, it's about Vault. It follows Valtu and Dahlia. Is that, yeah, Dahlia. Valtu is basically, he's Dracula. He's who um, Bram Stoker based the Dracula. He's a real-life Dracula. Been living for mad centuries. And um, throughout his life, he's met and lost his the love of his life, Dahlia, whatever. So in this life, um, Dahlia is a witch who is actually tasked with killing the famous Dracula because he's, you know, um, he's supposedly like a part of this, like other part uh, thing of vampires who are like doing stuff they're not supposed to do in the witch's guild. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dahlia is a part of the witch's, witch's guild. And for her to get back into the good graces of the witch's guild, she has to um, pull up his last mission. Um, but you know, okay. she meets Dracula and she's trying to, um, you know, get close to him so that she can kill him. But of course she's like falling in love and trying to understand like, what is this deep pull that's so like, you know, from this man. Um, and she's never, you know, falling in love with a vampire, all this other stuff, whatever. So, um, it, is, it kind of left off on a cliffhanger too. I'm not gonna lie, the ending was like, oh, what? And then, so I kinda, I do, really do wanna read the second one, but it was good, very spicy, if you guys remember before. It's very much hardcore, like. Is it categorized as erotica? I think. Scrolls all the way, all the way down. Yeah. No? No, just as adults. Paranormal, dark Romance. fantasy. Yeah. yeah. But it's given very much, um, what's that channel? Skin and Mac. Oh. <laughs> like, to the point where I was like laughing out loud. I was like, this is too much. Why am I reading this? Not vampires, but it was, it was, it, but it was still good. The story, the plot was still there, but it was still very much raunchy. So if you're into that type of thing, check it out. Um, I do want to read the second one. There's a part two to the book that kind of like, I guess, closes off their love story um, without giving off, giving away too much. So not you being that many books behind schedule. Excuse you. I am <laughs> trying to keep pace. I'm going to catch up the watch. I'm going to do my 50 for the year. But yeah, so that was Blood Orange by Queen Hill. It was cute. It was cute for what it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So next book I read, I joined Asia. Look, I got the book. Celeste. You need to take a picture. I am. Yeah, that's why okay. I got it. <laughs> Our Missing Hearts. It's like I'm going to take a picture, but I don't remember. <laughs> um, it's too much going on. Um, yes. Yeah, so, Asia read that the month before. So, I got it available. Went ahead and knocked that out. Just to remind us, it focuses on Young Bird. He's a 12-year-old boy mm -hmm. living in this um, kind of, I don't want to say dystopic. Uh, what do you want to call it? Post- uh, like this political highly politically charged mm -hmm. alternative kind of you know movie, universe yeah mm -hmm. i guess um where um there's this act called pact that is you know celebrating american pride and and really kind of anti-chinese and anti um ideals that'll you know kind of influence people to not have that american pride or patriotism and so bird lives with his father in new there no cambridge right they yeah. somewhere because mm -hmm. his father's yeah yeah so he um bird lives with his father and um his mother left him when he was nine and she was a, ch a chinese was she chinese chinese american I think so yeah but she was of that descent and um pretty much um he never understood why she left 
um you know he is a very curious boy so he would research and try to figure out things about her and he had a really close friend who would also talk about his mom and and you know from what he gathered she was a really key player in the political anti-pack movement and so um bird as he's getting older gets more and more curious about his mom and just really what happened with her one day he receives a letter that he wants to decipher and and figures out that it's from his mom and just really then goes on this journey to um uh, find her mm -hmm. and and you know kind of see what's what's up what's up mommy so the book is broken into two parts first part is like bird just kind of being in the shadows and the second part is like my eyes are open let me go on this journey i don't know but pretty much um yeah that's really what the bird um, the bird the book entails is just his journey his discovery uh of you know just everything that's going on because he's very much shielded from even though he knows pact is a thing he's very much shielded from the what it means and 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 just the impact it's had on his family and just really people around him and um and yeah <laughs> but okay so i overall enjoyed the book i like the message i like the symbolism i liked you know what it was supposed to mean in regards to just a lot of things that are you know you can say are happening today you know whether it's specifically against you know asian people of asian descent or people of color or you know just really disenfranchised people it's just a lot of copy and paste when you can think of like what group this could apply to you know realistically it, it applies to so many things we see um politically today um so i like the overall themes that were discussed and really i just enjoyed um just the writing and just everything that was presented i'll say the first part of the book was a little bit like it was slow, slow mm -hmm. because it is a lot of you're in boy boys you're in bird's head and um he doesn't understand a lot of things so a lot of his interactions and a lot of things as he's processing it is very limited and so i, I didn't mind that but it just you know it just made the story a little bit slower because you as an adult of course reading is like yeah this is this is a thing <laughs> young child um but yeah but second part once it gets to him going on his journey him encountering things and him really understanding his mother's story and and just everything with her um you i forget that show because i was like charlie mm -hmm. um you just you just get a little bit more excited and a little bit more engaged in the story so overall like it balances out it does finish in a nice way i i found myself not really emotionally connected in the first part of the book but as things started to happen I was just like oh my god this is really moving so it did have some moving points mm -hmm. in there um so I found myself surprisingly moved I guess because I was I didn't I wasn't that invested at first but overall I think it's a good um heart stirring emotional um book that you know draws a deeper conversation mm -hmm. if you can stick with it till the end it is a good a pretty yeah. good story um okay so next book that i read was just kind of like a random i actually was scrolling through book talk and somebody had mentioned this book and i was like i've seen that like name and that that's cover book talk. Uh, yeah book talk book two book talk <laughs> so and that's excuse me while i ugly cry by joya goffney so yeah so excuse me while i ugly ugly cry it is like a teen contemporary romance young adult um it follows i'm trying to find the people names y'all edame no quinn okay quinn oh. and carter quinn and carter are both um black young black uh kids who go to they're in high school they're like in their last year of high school about to go to college mm -hmm. um and quinn is a girl like i'll say she's one of those girls that like she's she's black but she's just now figuring out like i think she spent most of her time in like white spaces growing up and so she's just now figuring out the little you know passive aggressive and what's it called transgressions that like microaggressions microaggressions mm -hmm. that's the word like she's coming to terms with like you know that type of thing and carter is very much 
he got into the school on a scholarship. He's from the other side of the track, so he already know. He kind of knows how like life is. I, I'll say like she's a little more naive than him. And Quinn has a book, so basically like she has a book that she writes in a journal. What did she call it? I don't forgot everything, y'all. Her burn book. It's kind of like a burn book, but basically <laughs> it's a journal where she writes like all these lists. Um, she has lists like uh, ten boys I want to kiss in school. Um, 10 reasons why I can't tell my parents this. Like, just all her personal Ooh, goals. Like, this like, man's girl don't do it. Because if somebody finds it, you're going to be in a situation like Quinn. Uh -oh. She loses the book. And then somebody <gasps> starts blackmailing her. Um, making her, like, basically telling her she better um, go do this certain thing from the book. Or they're going to post this list on Instagram and show everybody it. Like, so her and, and Carter... Basically, they get off on the wrong foot. They don't really like each other. And she thinks that Carter's the one that lost her book or is the one that's blackmailed her at first. Um, but then, you know, they kind of team up and she finds, like, this new group of friends. And they're kind of helping her through this blackmail situation. And also, like, the, situa uh, the situation with her parents, um, with her, like, lying to her parents about what school she got into. All types of stuff. And within all this, you know, a, a young romance blossoming in between her and Carter. <laughs> So, yeah, it was, I thought it was really, really cute. I think Kristen would like it. I think you would like it. I have it's to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, it, it was really cute. I think that, um, it kind of gave a little perspective. Like, I didn't go to, like, a traditional, co the traditional college route, but it kind of, like, um, lets you into the mind of, you know, kids when they're kind of, like, trying to live up to what their parents, um, want them to do, and Quinn is deaf, she's struggling with that, and then also, like, losing friends i guess and we all have all been through that like losing friends at an age where you thought you guys were going to be friends forever but then it's like oh we're not friends no more like you really wasn't my friend like that so it's you know it goes through all those emotions and then also like young love which is always super cute super like nostalgic so i really enjoyed it i thought it was cute i'll definitely read something else from joy joya goffney um i don't know if she has other books but i really enjoyed it it was a super quick read i listened to it and it was just really cute it's just really cute. I have it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> All right. So I read. Um, I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. I think it's. And Never I heard of her. Yes, you have. Have you heard of the Great Believers? Yes, I think so. That's her. I think it's called The Great Believers. <laughs> it sounds familiar. Yeah, like, you, so once believers. you see the cover, you're like, oh, because that's what I was looking at other books by her. And I was like, oh, I've seen this cover before. Mm -hmm. um, anywho. But, okay. Boom. <sighs> and I finished this one probably the most recent. And mm -hmm. I just can't remember. So, this focuses on um, Bodie Kane. Bodie Kane. Not Bodie Kane. Mm -hmm. Bodie Kane. She is a... Uh, <laughs> 23 years from graduating her high school which is like a boarding school and um she's on her way back to teach a, a like a little mini mester for two weeks um Bodhi is looking forward to this because lately Bodhi has been grappling with some thoughts and feelings about the murder of one of her former roommates that happened in her senior year mm -hmm. uh Thalia Thalia, I can't remember Thalia's last name. So Thalia, um, over the years, her name has been brought back up and her, her murder um, has been discussed amongst, you know, message boards and YouTube and things like that. And, um, and Bodhi has a sense that the person convicted for the crime uh, is innocent. Didn't really do yep. It. Mm. So, um, Bodhi is, uh, she has a popular podcast on her own and, and really kind of, uh, does a lot of, uh, teaching. So she teaches a podcast class to her, I mean, a podcast, yeah, a podcast class for the mini master and puts a list of su subjects and put Thalia's, uh, death on there and, you know, don't want to nudge her students, but really want that someone to take on the task of looking further into this so she can kind of have an excuse to kind of look into it as well. That's manipulative. Right. <laughs> so, but Bodhi, uh, is revisiting a lot of memories and a lot of thoughts and things like that. And as her students are uncovering things, she, um, is starting to put pieces together from things she's already start been speculating, you know, over the years. And so the book overall is addressed to who she thinks 
actually did it. Mm -hmm. um, so she's um, kind of asking herself questions throughout, asking them questions like, why did you blah, 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 blah. Um, so she has her sight set on this one person and just as things start to unfold, um, it gets to a point where she may have the opportunity to help with the um, person that's in jail, his conviction and things like that. And a lot of old uh, players are pulled back into or a lot of her classmates are pulled back into the mess as well. So it's just going into um, just the un packing of this murder that happened 23 years prior who really did it and like what happened so i would say overall i really enjoyed the writing i really enjoyed how things were presented i liked how it was it was just little moments that i was like okay i like how she put this together it's like i don't know i can't explain it but i just liked how she put things together as you was reading along and it was kind of like oh, okay um, I had initially saw this on a book list of humorous books. I don't know. I guess you it had a little humor to it. It was kind of like, I don't know, one of those mysteries that where it's kind of like funny, mm -hmm. but not really. It wasn't really, I don't know. I can't explain it. But she, I guess her herself was a little humorous and just things that were happening. But anywho, um, so those are the things I liked. I, I, I wanted to see where the story went. I wanted to see, you know, who did it. If the person who uh, was convicted actually was falsely accused or, you know, I just wanted to see all those things unfold. Mm -hmm. What I did not like, the ending, mm. the ending, it left you hanging. It left you with more questions than answers. It didn't leave you satisfied. Like they did so much work to unpack everything. And it's like, everything's just still on the floor. Like where, where does this go from here? And yeah, I don't want to ruin it. Cause it's, it's, it's just, it's just the ending. It was just hugely disappointing to me and very dissatisfying. Um, which almost really made me dislike the book because I really enjoyed it. I, it it just could have been, I don't want to even want to say it had to be a finite ending. It just could have been sh pointed in some type of direction of this was the likely next step. I don't know if y'all read, read it. Let me know if I'm tripping, if I missed something. But when it ended, I'm like, what? Like, I'm like, yeah. play. Like, what's going on? <laughs> <And that's it. laughs> so, yeah, that, I mean, I still gave it a decent rating because I think it was still a lot of good, good things in there but that ending woo. Mm, i'm not reading that <laughs> well i can tell you what happened so next my last book um one i read it too. Kristen read it too and um one of our favorite girls um she's is she a favorite i don't know she's becoming a she favorite becoming a fav. she's one of those like if she puts out a book and i have the time i'm gonna read it because i feel like i always enjoy i've never read something by her and i'm like oh that was um um read three books She's what I wanted Colleen Hoover to be. Okay. You know, but it didn't really turn out like that. Yes. But okay, so and that's Emily Henry. Her, she her new book, um, the happy well, happy place is what it's called. The so life. that I don't know why it's all like <laughs> simple. Cause you know what? In the book when it was narrating it, she'd be like real life. Um, and then they'd be like Oh, ha my happy, happy place. place. Yeah. Yeah. Real life. And then that's all I was like simple, happy, I don't know. Okay, so anyway. It's, this follows Harriet and Wynn. They are college sweethearts, um, just meant to be together, um, just a perfect little couple, but turns out they done broke up six months ago and didn't tell anybody, didn't tell their friends, and now their friends are inviting them on this trip that they have. I think it's like an annual trip, I don't know, something yeah. that they do often. Um, because they have like a surprise for them and they haven't told their friends that they broke up, so they, they their friends invited both of them to this trip and now they're kind of stuck like kind of playing along like they're still together um on the trip with their friends and trying to keep up mind you they haven't spoken to each other in six months they were engaged everything broke it off for reasons that they're not really disclosing just yet and yeah they're stuck in this cottage with their friends and kind of trying to come to terms with harry's trying to figure out why when just left her like that left her high and dry and she's kind of struggling in her career. She's a doctor in her residency or a surgeon, something like that, in her residency. And when 
they were having like a long distance relationship. Wynn was going back and forth to like some, for some place. Yeah, <laughs> some state. Yeah. Um, yeah, care for his mom. And yeah, their relationship was struggling. And then kind of out of seemingly out of nowhere, um, Wynn broke it off. And they just haven't spoken or told anybody since then. And now they're, this is like a group of best friends, college friends. They're stuck in this college together. And then things kind of come, you know, to a head where every, I, feel, I feel like tensions get a little high. Everybody's kind of like dealing with their own problems, but unbeknownst to each other. And yeah, so it just kind of explodes from there. Was that a good synopsis? Mm -hmm. Good enough. I think that's everything that happened. So yeah, it basically just follows Harry and when and what happened with them and why they're not together no more. Mm -hmm. um, Let us know if y'all want a book review too. Yeah, because it was like, I think this is her latest one. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute, um, per usual. Um, there was a lot of back and forth with Harry and Wynn, and it was, it was kind of annoying in the sense of like, why are y'all not together? Like, you keep asking her if she happy. Are you happy? Like, what what is going on here? Like, and it just really irritated me with Harry because really? if I was her, I would have been like, she. I I reading this book, listening to this book, I realized how immature I am because the way I would have been like, <laughs> like mean? right, like what do you want? What do you? Because I'm not, I can't be fake and I can't play along with stuff like that. When you just done broke my heart, like absolutely not. Um, so yeah, that was my own thing. But I, I, I did enjoy it. But it was just kind of like my own reader brain, just like, oh, y'all are frustrating. Like, just get it over. Because y'all, you could tell to me like they still wanted to be together. So it was kind of just like, just ask him like, what's tea? What's going on? Why did he break up? So yeah, I liked it. I liked it too. I, I just. I really, I mean, just in case we do a book review, I'm not gonna give it too much energy. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I I liked the little back and forth because it, to me, it gave me those feels of like, it did, right? uh, like I know y'all because I very much sense they both wanted to be together. You can tell they still loved each and other and still loved each other. So that was what was and I to think me. it was. It, it was very moving you know to me the reasoning once you get to that point mm -hmm. the reasoning behind them and it's just like ugh, like i don't know i i like this one better than beach read but yeah. i didn't read um book lovers book lovers mm -hmm. so i like yeah i i'll if we do a book group, i'll explain further but if not um i just it just gave me more I it just like gave me lovers. more yeah i it was cute yeah we should do a review because i do have thoughts i guess but um yeah so that was happy place by emily henry okay. Cute romance. she's the romance girly now i feel like yeah she she, she she's can, a good romance all right well i got i'll do my seven fifths one um because i'm almost i'm literally almost done i got like an hour or something left mm -hmm. um so i read in my night or in my dreams i hold a knife by ashley winstead mm -hmm. so pretty much um this one focuses in it's kind of similar to um in a way it was giving me similar vibes to I have some questions for you it was um pretty much focuses in oh i'm listening to it and i can't think of the girl name so her name is jessica jessica miller jessica miller is um returning to her high not her high school her college reunion 10 years later and she had a tight-knit fit friend group they were called the east town six or east house six something like that east house seven i'm just making up stuff and Pretty much um, one of their friends is killed and one of their other friends is accused of the murder, but he's never convicted. And so 10 years later, she's the only one in contact with him who, who was uh, acquitted um, or never convicted rather. But pretty much at their reunion, um, coming across everything and with everyone and she's faced with her opportunity to kind of, I guess over her life she's felt ignored she's felt second best she's she's always tried to shape herself out to be like i'm this girl i'm that girl mm -hmm. and it's it moment out of, right moment <laughs> after moment after moment she's disappointed to find out like people she don't view me that way she really not so that girl. going back to this reunion is her her chance to say i'm hugely successful i'm beautiful now like look at me mm -hmm. but um things aren't going according to plan and then um pretty much coming back together with her group of friends and some other folks that were around during that time um they are all confronted um truths and secrets start to come out 
um, the younger brother of the uh, victim, he kind of doesn't, he believes that one of them did it. And so as they're trying to figure that out, yeah, you just find out things happen and some, some things related to other things kind of may have led to this, um, to the murder of their friend. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm almost done. Like I said, I find it's a good book in regards to just the plot and just the twists that are coming up and things like that, especially as they're revealing secrets. So I'm, I'm intrigued by that. But I find the main character a little bit annoying, mm -hmm. especially she's like, no, this is my moment. You, here comes so-and-so. They're supposed to look at me. Look at me. Like, it just feels very <laughs> whiny, like, a little bit. Um, and so it just puts me off because I'm like, I don't know where to look. Is that the point of the story? I don't know. It's a bit distracting. And there was moments of distraction too for me in the, I have some questions for you that I forgot to mention, but anywho, um, I find it a bit distracting from the plot, just her overall personality and how she's kind of framing things and whatnot. But it might add, maybe once I get to the end, it might add to what actually happened and why. So I don't know. We'll see if that comes together, but I just wanted to mention that because I'm almost done. <laughs> Let's get okay. into what we're reading for June. Okay, I got a list. I got a whole bunch of books. You got a list, but it's I do, but it's like, am I gonna read them though? I be reading random stuff. Okay, so I'll go with what I know I'm gonna read. What my list? I do. I wrote it down last night. Thank you. So for sure, I'm gonna read Yellow. I wanna read that by Art Quan. Oh, yeah. Jealous? Yeah, let me see. It ain't on there. I got it on Audible. For real. Because I had a credit at, to use, and I was like, oh, let me just use this. two words or one? <gasps> okay. So it is on there. So she might read it. Okay. Yes. Well, that should be, it, but it's probably 24 hours long. No, it ain't. Look okay. at it. It don't look that long. It's not that bad. Yeah. Okay, this babble got me shit. And yeah. I still had never put in the library, mind you, so we do. Okay, so yellow face on my list too. But um, <laughs> uh, another book I actually, that just came available and it came available like right now is um, Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult and somebody else. I read else. that. I know. That's why, I, I think that's why I had it on my, uh, the Pisces, you only want to read that because no, I know. <laughs> so, Mad Honey by Jennifer, Bo what is it? Finney Boylan well, yeah. and Jodie Picoult. It was a suggestion from Kristen, so yeah, it just came available like yesterday for me. So, I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. About that book. Mm -hmm. Okay, after Yellow Face, I don't know. Um, I have a list. I'm gonna read it. We'll see if I get to some of these or which ones. Um, let's see what for sure. For sure, I've just been seeing this too many places to ignore it or deny it. It is a super long book, but I'm gonna do it. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris, Yaris, mm -hmm. Yaros. It's a young adult like romance. It's about this dragon rider, and she doesn't feel like she deserves to be a dragon rider, but she has to live up to the legacy of her mom. But then she meets this other person, like. I read the synopsis, so I'm not that far off from what it's about. What's going on? So it's up my alley, I guess. But yeah, I just keep seeing it everywhere. So I was like, uh, I have an audible credit. So let me get it. Okay. Oh, yellow face is only eight hours. Okay. So next on my list is a book that I told Kristen about, and she probably didn't put it on screen, but it's um, called Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? Let me a write novel. It. It's a Reese with a spoon, a Reese book club pick. And I believe it's about like a um this actress from like back in the days and she kind of something about her she leaves like something to like these women and it turns out she was a black woman passing for white. Oh yeah. And you did send me that. Mm -hmm, and that's what I remember. I heard, like I just I saw somebody talking about them on TikTok and I was like, "Well, that sounds good." <laughs> I was like, "That sounds good." So, and they had it uh, available on script, so yeah. Okay. That's on my list. So let me see. Okay, so next I might read 
Murder Your Employer, The Magmaster's Guide to Homicide by Rupert I, I've seen Holmes. That yeah, yeah, I seen that circulating around and just the title alone just mm -hmm. was like, wait, like, what I'm gonna read it. So I don't know what it's about, but I think out of all that I have listed, that'll yeah, that'll make the cut. I got like six books. What was I thinking? Why did I write down so many books? Because over and ambitious. Right. <laughs> Okay, so next on my list, and I don't know if I'm going to read this, y'all. I just put it on my list when I was going down my rabbit hole of um, fantasy erotica stuff. Ooh. So this is called, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even erotica, but it's like, to me, it's, uh, that's erotic. But The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. So basically, it's like a retelling of like, I think like Peter Pan. But nasty. But make it, yeah, exactly. Nasty. Like Peter, I think it is. Wendy and Peter Pan. And it says the characters have been you. have been aged up for this darker okay, video I was about to say. If if you like your enemies to lovers romance with hot ruthless morally great love interest, you'll enjoy the Never King and the Lost Boy. So Okay. Now you can expect hate kissing. <laughs> what is <Okay>. that? <laughs> so yeah, that's they all aged them up. <laughs> I know, that was right? my first thought. They were <laughs> cute. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to rattle off three books just to say. I don't know which one of these. One of them might for sure. And then, yeah, or we'll go from there. So the rest, The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. I've been seeing that circulating around about, I guess, people get a box with the number and that tells them how long they have to live. Oh, my God. Something like that. That's too much. Right, so that's why I said maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, Akata Woman by Nindi Akorafor. I've been trying to read that for that's the Akata Witch. It's the last book, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I just haven't read it yet. Gotcha. Or uh, The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I mentioned that as a book I own mm -hmm. but have not read, and mm -hmm. I think I don't know, this might or I even have it. <laughs> oh, look at you, but I have it on Kindle, that's the library book. So, um, <laughs> so one of those. But the first three for sure. The first three I mentioned for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna read Yellow Face since it's on script. <laughs> She's just so happy. And what's the name? Like, and probably Mad Honey. Three for sure. Three for sure. So I that know. is it. Let us know what you all have been reading. Let us know any thoughts on any of the books we've mentioned mm -hmm. today. Like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll be back next time. Bye.